Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today I join a number of my colleagues on this amendment, members from both side of the, uh, sides of the dais, to strike Section 239 relating to hydraulic fracturing. Before I get too far into the concerns with this section, I want to address my broader concern that this issue is before us today. I am concerned that the tragic disaster in the Gulf that has resulted in oil spilling for nearly three months is being used today as a political pawn to advance broad energy policy and that the portions of this bill designed to, quote, fix, end quote, what went wrong is being rushed into being rushed into without an accurate and full understanding of what actually went wrong. My state of Louisiana is reeling from a devastating disaster that is still going. Our top priorities must remain stopping the leak, cleaning up the oil, addressing the needs of the Gulf State communities, and holding BP 100 percent accountable. But we still don't know what went wrong. Reforms are clearly needed to make American offshore drilling the safest in the world. The Gulf states collectively, and Louisiana in particular, has the greatest interest in moving forward with these kinds of reforms. But this must be done right. In this process, I believe by far the most pressing question is, again, what went wrong? How can we legislate a policy fix if we don't know the problem? And yet today, with the Presidential Commission just barely beginning its work, no investigations yet concluded, and the failed BOP still on the ocean floor we are marking up a bill. I'll, brief, I'll be frank, this is premature. And we had, in fact, uh, members on the other side actually admitting that, that uh, this is in many ways unrelated and intended to be unrelated to the BP spill. And I think uh, uh, f using this spill as a fulcrum is not the right thing to do. Furthermore, I am deeply troubled that this ongoing and devastating disaster to Louisiana is being used as an excuse to mark up a larger energy, energy package decorated like a Christmas tree with various and sundry unrelated matters. One such unrelated matter is contained in Section 239, which specifically requires a leaseholder to disclose on a public website created and operated by one of the new divisions of what was MMS, the chemical composition used in hydraulic fracturing. Today's language would, as I understand it, require the publication of proprietary information to which, as a practical matter, the lessee does not even have the right. Now, I'll admit on its face it all sounds benign enough, but none of us were born yesterday. The language has Congresswoman DeGette's fingerprints all over it. As you know, she has a bill to require disclosure of the contents of this solution, contents of the solution, which is more than 90 percent water, and to have additional layers of bureaucracy and red tape imposed by the EPA. Today's language is the first step of that. This is the proverbial camel's nose under the tent toward fully imposing Ms. DeGette's bureaucratic regulation of hydraulic fracturing by the EPA, something that has been effectively done by individual states for over a half a century. This is bad for business. It amounts to nothing more than another attempt at destroying jobs in my already devastated state and across the country and reducing our supply of clean natural gas. Hydraulic fracturing, which has been used commercially for more than 50 years and today is used in an estimated 85 to 90 percent of all the oil and gas wells drilled in the U.S., is necessary to produce from unconventional natural gas formations. As many of you know, one such unconventional source, the Haynesville Shell Play, is being de de developed in my district in northwest Louisiana. My district knows firsthand the benefits of this energy development. Beyond the direct economic benefits of bonus payments and royalty payments, our local and state tax revenue has increased by at least $912.3 million in 2009 and created more than 57,600 jobs in Louisiana last year. At a time when the state of Louisiana has estimated that the deep water drilling moratorium imposed by Secretary Salazar will potentially result in, a more, in more than a loss of 20,000 Louisiana jobs within the next 12 to 18 months, I am deeply troubled that we are now looking at hydraulic fracturing. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood. In a state devastated by the environmental effects of the oil spill, 
I, I have a keen sensitivity to safety and environmental quality. But let me be clear, hydraulic fracturing, the process used to produce natural gas from these wells, is in fact regulated. The states have been effectively regulating the hydraulic fracturing, and many states, including Louisiana, already have access to this chemical information when needed. I would ask my colleagues to support this amendment, and with that, I yield back my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm extremely flattered that Mr. Fleming would uh, um, say that my fingerprints all over, are all over this amendment because, in fact, the amendment was not developed by me but, all, but by the committee staff and the chairman. However, I do support it quite strongly. And, and I want to say one thing that we've learned, Mr. Chairman, from the, the great tragedy in the Gulf is while you certainly want to trust, you also want to verify. And we saw this with BP's actions in the Gulf, where they said, we, don't you worry, we are installing an oil rig here, a drilling rig that is completely safe. And as we learned, that wasn't always necessarily the truth. I happen to be one of these Democrats who's not for government overregulation, and I also happen to be one of these Democrats that supports strongly the practice of hydraulic fracturing and oil and gas development. I come from a state which our economy is going to be greatly benefited by oil and gas development and hydraulic fracturing. But I also think it's important, and one of our jobs as Congress, is to protect the public health. And one thing we've heard over and over again from the oil and gas companies is, don't worry, the hydraulic fracturing fluid is completely safe, and the chemical components in that fluid are completely benign. So when I say, well, then let's disclose those components, and let's do it in a way that protects proprietary information, they say, oh, well, wait a minute, we don't want to go that far. So it seems to me that it would be reasonable to say, let's support hydraulic fracturing, but let's also make sure that the public health is protected as we support hydraulic fracturing. The, and Mr. Chairman, the general lady. I'm not yet. And Mr. Chairman, that's exactly what two, Section 239 of the Manager's Amendment does. What it says is if people are going to develop wells on public lands, then what they need to do is make available to the public on an internet website created by the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Safe Enforcement the chemicals that are used in this hydraulic fracturing fluid. And by the way, it also says that proprietary information shall be protected, which I think is extremely important. Now, this, this bill only applies to public lands, but I believe this should happen with respect to all hydraulic fracturing. And if, as the industry says, there's nothing harmful in that fluid, then that's just great. But if there are harmful chemicals that are harming people, and there's been tremendous anecdotal evidence to prove that, then I think that, that people need to realize that and figure out some common sense ways that we can move forward with regulating that hydraulic fracturing fluid. I will also say a lot of the parts of industry do not object to disclosure. In fact, just this morning, the Wall Street Journal reported that range resources would be voluntarily disclosing the chemicals used in hydraulic fracturing in the Marcellus Shale. CEO John Pinkerton was quoted as saying, it's the right thing to do morally and ethically, but it's also right for our shareholders. One company in one region is a good start, but any community where fracking is going on deserves similar information. I will also say a number of CEOs have said both before this committee and the Energy and Commerce Committee that they would be willing to disclose the components of the hydraulic fracturing fluid. And that's all, at this point, I think that we should do. The EPA is conducting a study about what's in the fracking fluid and whether it's hurting public health, and I think that's helpful to have that information. But disclosure, I think, is very important, and would I you, remain willing to, uh, in, in one moment, I remain willing to work with Mr. Fleming, Mr. Chairman, with you, with anybody, with the industry, to come up with some kind of regulatory scheme that's reasonable, and I'm now happy to yield to my yes, colleague. Yes, uh, do you agree, uh, or do you feel, rather, 
that the EPA should actually be uh, over hydrofracking, should be regulating hydrofracking? Well, it, it, we're, we're in discussions right now. Obviously, this amendment is requiring any kind of fracking that's going on on public lands to, to, um, to report to the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. I think that's a start with the public lands. So, yeah, but I mean, that's not but, answering But the my discussions question. are going on outside but, the purview of But do you feel that it should be under the EPA? Uh, this is one of the areas that we're discussing So you do right think now. it should be under EPA? I, I'll reclaim my time and I'll yield it back, Mr. Chairman.